There is one often overlooked but key part of any bike fit, saddle angle. Many of us are guilty of leaving our saddle in position for good once we get our bike and forgetting about it. Flat as a pancake, jobs are good em. But is this the right approach to take? And have we been getting our saddle angle wrong this whole time? Let's take a closer look. Saddle angle or tilt is measured from the front to the back of your saddle and it is the slope of your seat on your bike when it's on flat ground and that's quite important. It's easiest to do this measurement when you're at home and you know the surface that you have your bike on is totally level. You can do it out and about if you have a spirit level or you can even do this with an app on your phone um, but it is a bit harder when you're on uneven surfaces. Definitely get it on the flat and then you simply just put your spirit level on your saddle find the measurement pointing down would be negative degrees pointing up would be positive traditionalists would argue that your saddle should stay relatively flat at zero degrees and this logic is fairly ingrained in cycling culture i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that i'm just saying it exists cue posting a photo or showing anyone a photo of your bike with your saddle pointing down and you'll see the torrents of questions you'll get asked relating to this particular part of your bike setup. It is a cycling trigger this one and the thought is that if you do tilt your saddle down then you're potentially going to end up with knee pain and upper body discomfort as you're shifting your body weight forwards, your saddle is not taking that weight, you're shifting it forwards and you're placing undue pressure on the bars via your hands. Plus, the argument continues that because you're tilted forwards, you begin to slip off your saddle and you're constantly having to readjust your position on the fly, which isn't the most comfortable. But if you've got a keen eye, you may have noticed certain pros starting to tilt their saddle down ever so slightly with riders like Lachlan Morton, Chris Froome posting photos up on social media of their bikes with a definite sloping downwards on their saddle. And also I spotted this on a recent GCN tech video of today Pogacar's bike and his saddle was definitely tilting downwards and I wasn't the only one to spot this either. There was a few of you in the comments noticing the same thing. So if pros are starting to tilt their saddles down, should we take note and do the same? According to the science, yes, or at least we should think about it. So this study, which examines 19 different cyclists' uphill effort, found that their power increased on average by 1.4%, with a maximum power improvement of 6%. Now, this was after saddles were tilted downwards by a whopping 8 degrees. There is also this study from way back in 1999 which found that lower back pain was reduced in the riders who took part in the study who angled their saddles down by a whopping 10 to 15 degrees, which is a huge amount, but those results are pretty interesting. Pogacar's approach appears to be one that's based on the terrain of the day and it seems that he's tilting his saddle down more on races with more steeper climbs. And this is potentially for reasons of comfort and also increasing his power output. So if you look at races like the Tour of Flanders, which have a whole load of steep climbs, cobbled steep climbs, it's here where the race winning effort is gonna be decided on those steeper gradients. So, say you're on a climb with a 10% average gradient, a bit like the one behind me that I've just got up. If your saddle angle was set at zero degrees, on that 10% slope, you'd actually have a five degree upward tilt on your saddle. Rise that gradient to 20%, and that tilt rises to 10 degrees tilting upwards. By opting for a negatively sloping saddle to begin with, the thought is that you prepare for these scenarios in advance. So once you get on that steep climb and you have to put your effort down, your saddle isn't pointing to the sky, which is something that pretty much all bike fitters agree you should avoid. The reason being, in this case, is that if you point your saddle up with a positive angle, it means your pelvis can't rotate properly and that rotation has to come from your back instead, which 
people argue, ends up with discomfort and a loss of power. There's also the argument that tilting your saddle down increases your comfort by solving any perineum issues you may be suffering by taking that pressure away from your nether regions. Also allowing you to get into a more aerodynamic position by lowering your front end, getting more aggressive at the front, therefore going faster because you're able to rotate those hips and get your position much lower there at the front, which all sounds great. But is it that straightforward? And should we all start then tilting our saddles down? If you're a pro, then you're gonna be limited in what you can do because saddle angle is actually written into the UCI rules. So you can't have more than a nine degree tilt on your saddle angle with one degree margin of error. And that's measured from the front to the back. But this rule has relaxed since 2015. Before that, it used to be that you could only have two and a half degrees of tilt and a half degree margin of error. So you can see where this ingrained sort of culture might have come from in the pro cycling world that you need to have your saddle totally flat. There's also a difference between a flat saddle and a curved one, slightly curved one like the one I'm using now and an even more dramatically curved saddle. Alex did go into a bit more depth on saddle choice over on the tech channel so check that out if you want to find out a bit more about what sort of saddle might suit you depending on your flexibility and your riding style. You also need to think about where you're taking that saddle tilt measurement from. Do you sit more towards the front of the saddle in which case you taking that tilt right here or do you sit a bit further back and take it right from the back of the saddle to the front and if you're not sitting there and you are doing that then you're potentially leaving yourself with that nose tilting up just a little bit but to try and get to the bottom of all that I wanted to catch up with a professional physio and get their take on the matter and a bike fitter too so I caught up with Brian from the bike the body to find out more Brian, thanks so much for joining us. We've been delving into saddle angle and personally, I'm starting to learn we can afford to change our tilt a bit more than I previously thought. We've got the likes of Pogaccia and other pros doing the same. Why are we seeing the likes of Pogaccia start to tilt their saddle down then? Well, as, as we discussed, there is a performance advantage to doing this. Right? The research has shown this, that specifically in uphill cycling tests, that if you tilt the saddle angle down to either closely match or to negate the effect of the gradient, we can actually improve growth efficiency and negate the negative biomechanical changes. So that, that posterior tilting of the pelvis that happens when we ride uphill, we can negate that slightly. And we can maintain that forward engaged pelvic position, maximize glute muscle activation and, and effective pedaling over, uh, over the bike. So that, that's why we see them doing it. There is a performance advantage to be had. And, I think for me, the sweet spot would be if tech can come in where we can have a, a saddle clamp that can be controlled, let's say, at a dropper seat post and we can have it drop to minus eight when we're going up a climb and then flick back to your previous saddle angle. That, that for me is the, that's the win. Do you think in general it's okay for more people to begin to copy that? I think when we start to get into more extreme angles, you're probably going to find the simple answer is that the negatives will outweigh the benefits. Um, in terms of saddle angles, you, you've got to start with a, a baseline where if you're working with a more flat saddle like this, you want to look at something like zero to maybe minus two. If you're looking at a saddle that has a sort of a kick, so a little lift at the back, you might look at going from minus two, maybe as far as minus four. And if you're dealing with a more curved saddle, it might be that you go from minus three towards minus six to actually find that you're sat comfortably in there. When you start to go outside of these sort of baselines and that's not to say that we don't you're more likely to start increasing what we term from a bike fit perspective as instability i.e shifting the weight off the saddle which otherwise needs to be the greatest contact and weight bearing point on the bike so you shift weight onto the hands you shift weight through the arm neck and shoulders and a little bit more weight onto the, the knees so while that will help to reduce negative pedaling positions and muscle activation and biomechanics going uphill there'll be consequences when you're going downhill and when you're riding on the flat so if you're someone that does a lot of routes with loads of steep climbs, do you think maybe that you should think about angling it down a bit more potentially, or are those negative drawbacks just gonna, just gonna kind of outweigh that? The thing we have to remember is that every rider is individual. What works for one rider won't necessarily work for the next rider. 
So our individual biomechanics, our pelvic position and alignment, our soft tissue, whether we're actually suffering with pressure. So if you find that you're actually really comfortable riding on flat, but when you do long climbs, you actually tend to struggle with pressure and you tend to more roll your pelvis backwards, then you may be the sort of rider that's going to benefit more from perhaps a slightly more downward tilted angle when you are doing rides that involve lots more climbing. So, you know, if you're on a trip to the Alps or the Pyrenees or some other mountains, and you're going to be doing a lot of long climbs, you may well find that a slightly more nose down angle is going to be better. But the key thing with all of this is to do experimentation. Make sure you know your position and you've got a good way to document and record it and then start to test it and work in smaller increments rather than say going from your previous reliable minus two to minus 10. And let's talk biomechanics because spoken about how there's potential advantage to tilting it down and when you're seeing lights of the are doing it, what, what actually is the benefit to your power transfer of doing this? So the key thing is when you're riding uphill, the bike is obviously tilted upwards. The tendency that that creates is for our pelvis to rotate posteriorly. So if you imagine here, sat on the saddle, our pelvis is going to actually, as we go uphill, rock backwards a little bit as the saddle tilts upwards that way. So if we tilt the saddle back downwards to account for that, if we tilt down that way, we're going to allow the pelvis to still sit forward. As that pelvis is able to stay forward rotated, you're going to get much better activation of quads and glutes rather than that change of decreasing quadriceps, which some of the research has shown, and increasing hamstrings, which is essentially having to pull the pedal back as you tend to fall backwards off the bike. So that's the theory, that's the idea behind it. And there is some good research to support this. Um, there's a number of different papers that have looked at the biomechanical changes. And so purely in that uphill riding scenario, tilting the saddle back down to account for the increase in gradient can actually modify your growth efficiency to actually improve that over a baseline position and just also improve your biomechanics and muscle activation. And where should we actually take that saddle angle measurement from? Because we all kind of do tend to sit on our saddles in slightly different positions. So how do we take that into account and find that tilt measurement? So you're right, we do all sit in different positions uh, on our saddle and some of that is down to again, rider preference. Sometimes it's down to bike setup as well. Um, we should all try to sit across the mid to the wider part of the saddle because that is the most supportive part of the saddle. In terms of taking angle, I'll recommend most people as an easy thing to do is to have either a plank of wood or a chopping board, something that's stable and flat. Make sure your bike is flat. So if it's in your turbo trainer, make sure it's upright and straight. Um, in the studio here, I use a T-bar um, with a digital spirit gauge. So again, that's going to give me an exact number. But at home, if you use a piece of wood that's flat and your smartphone with a spirit level app, and uh, if you've got ideally with numbers rather than a spirit bubble, you just need to take into account that you want to cover the whole saddle. And that's going to give you, as I said, those different set of numbers. So if it's a curved saddle like this, I might be looking to set something up more in the minus three to minus six, whether it's a flatter saddle, I will be looking again, placing the T-bar straight across the whole saddle and looking at something between zero and minus two. And are there drawbacks? We're going even more extreme than that going to the sort of minus 10 realm of saddle tilt uh, if like if it can work for anyone is that something that's a total no-no or do we need to give a bit more thought so again coming back to where we've seen this being employed in a professional peloton we have to remember that professional riders are exactly that they are professional riders so therefore their training is all structured around getting used to these things. Their power output and their body mass is very different to perhaps the broader population who ride bikes. So we don't all have the same low body mass that cyclists tend to in their upper bodies compared to the power in their legs, which means the broader population are gonna struggle more with the weight that that throws onto the front of the bike and that slip forward on the saddle. So I think while it can work in a professional rider who is dedicated to setting up and earning that position and really developing it, it may well be have a greater negative consequence for a, a broader population to try it. And that's why I think you've got to experiment and maybe test it out with smaller changes to see where that sweet spot is for you. And are there any kind of key injuries you might pick up? Because we have talked about the benefits of tilting that saddle down. Um, is it just a case of discomfort or is there kind of key injuries that you see from people who do have their saddle pointing too far down? So in terms of injuries, as I said, the more we tilt the saddle down, the more we will become unstable forward on the bike. And the only way to stop yourself falling too far forward on the bike is either the grip of your bicycle shorts on the saddle, your hands pushing backwards or your legs pushing backwards. So 
I've seen an increased incidence of anterior knee pain, so pain at the front of the knee from having to push backwards, being loaded too heavily onto the knees. So we can have front of knee problems, and that's a really common one we see in the Bifit studio and physio as well. Uh, and then we can also see problems that initially start as pressure actually developing as far as nerve compression and therefore getting tingling and numbness into the hands. So while those issues may not necessarily initially be called injuries, when you go from pressure all the way to the point of nerve compression, you can actually start to develop lasting changes where the nerves are actually tingling, not just during a ride, but after a ride. And those are sure signs that you've got too much weight forward on the front of the bike. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Brian. That's, that's super interesting and helpful. Thanks for your time. No problem. So, should we all tilt our saddle down then? I think the simple answer is no, but it's definitely something that we should consider based on our riding style and perhaps abandon the concept that a bike saddle needs to always be flat. And I think it's worth saying too, that if you are gonna make any changes and potentially experiment with this, then make small changes over time. Don't make one whacking big thing to begin with, because whilst you might experience benefits of increased power, what you don't want to do is end up with an injury from those position changes. But let me know in the comment section below if you've got any experience of changing your own saddle angle and what sort of effects that may have had on your riding. Thanks as always for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you found it useful and we'll see you on the next one.